Now this is going to cover lab 5. Lab 5 is going to be about what it means for a resistor to be in parallel with another resistor or another component. In this case, since we haven't gotten to anything other than voltages and resistances, it'll be purely resistances. So, when you have a resistor, I need a marker over here. Let's hope that I can get this done in 90 minutes or less. In the circuits that we have seen so far, we operate with a single resistor. However, as you most undoubtedly know, single, cir single resistor circuits are eh, pretty much useless. So, we have our current going in this direction. Our current I. I'm going to continue using blue for current. I don't need that just yet. I'll put that over there. Now let's say that we have two resistors, one after the other. We would have something along the lines of uh, and there we go. So now we have two resistors and we have a current going through them. The way this is configured, all of the current that comes out of our source has to go through resistor 1. In this case, let me label this R1. It has to go through R1 and it has to go through R2. There is no other path for the current to take aside from through R1 and R2. If we had three resistors in series, let's say that we had a another resistor over here. What did I do with that? I don't need these right now. I don't think I need those anymore. Let's say that we had R3 down here. R3. All of the current that passes through R1 will pass through R2 and R3. Something like this is known as a voltage divider. Why? Because we have our current I. If you remember your if you remember Ohm's law, V R I. So remembering Ohm's law, we know what our currents are, we know what our resistances are, we don't know what our voltages are. So in this case, our voltage is going to be I times R. And that is going to be the voltage across here. If the resistances are different, or if they are the same, the same is going to apply here. If I measure from here to here, it'll be I times R2, which is going to be a different voltage. As an example, let's say that R1, uh, what, do, what do I want to do? Let make, let's make this, sorry, let's make this over here. 10 volts. Let's make R1 equal 1 ohm. Let's make R2 equal 2 ohms. And let's, for the sake of argument, let's get rid of R3. Because we don't need it. At least not for the time being. Let's back up a little bit. So we have that. We have 10 volts, we have R1, we have R2. What is our current going to be? What is I going to be? Well, I is going to be V divided by R. In this case, we're not, to we're not looking at 10 volts across R1 or 10 volts across R2. We're looking at 10 volts from this point over to this point. Meaning that, did I hit record on that audacity? Good. Anyway. We are measuring the voltage across here and across that point. That means that our current is going to equal to our total, because whatever current goes through here 
whatever current goes through R1 will also have to go through R2. In this case, our resistances add up. So, R total is going to equal R1 plus R2, which is equal to 3 ohms. And our voltage is 10 volts. If we want to find out what I is, we need to do V divided by R. So, V is 10 volts in this case, and R is equal to 3 ohms. This is equal to, uh, what is that, 3.3 .3 repeating? I'm just going to write it as 3.3 .3 amps, because we have a volt over an ohm. In this case, we have 3.3 .3 volt, 3.3 uh, .3 amps going through it. Is that correct? 10 divided by 3 is, yeah, 3.3. .3. Of course, it's 3.3 .3 repeating, but we're only concerned with two sig figs, probably. Now, doing the same thing with what I had earlier. What I had earlier was... R3 over here. And let's make R3 equal to 3 ohms. Let's keep it consistent. Start paying attention to what you're doing, Adrian. This is R3 is equal to 3 ohms. So what is our R total going to be now? Our total is going to equal R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3. 5. 5 ohms. 5 ohms. We know what our voltage across this point and this point is. It's going to be 10 volts. We know what our resistance is. What is our current going to be? Well, our current is going to be V divided by RT. V divided by RT is going to equal to 10 volts divided by 5 ohms. And this is equal to, oh yeah, 10 divided by 5, that's 2. So we're looking at 2 volts over ohms, which is equal to 2 amps. We have 2 amps of current. Now, if we want to measure the voltage at this point, let me stay consistent and use red for that. If we want to measure a voltage at this point, voltage at, let's label this A, B, C, and D. If we wanted to measure from, we wanted to measure the voltage at A. So V at A, we would put our positive probe at A and our negative point at the negative terminal or on D in this case. That would be 10 volts. If we wanted the voltage, VA is equal to 10 volts. VB is going to equal to, we put our positive terminal at B for our meter and our negative lead on D. Let me be a bit more explicit on that one. Why am I always losing my leads? Okay, here. Fourteen twenty-four. We should be good. So I will turn this over to Waltz. Do note that what I am trying to measure is not amps. I'm not trying to measure amps. I'm not trying to measure mi milliamps or microamps. I am trying to measure volts. So it gets plugged into the volts. Because I am right handed, let's do this. If I wanted to measure the voltage at A, I would go over here and put my positive lead at A. If I wanted to measure the voltage at B, I would put my lead at B. If I wanted to measure C, I would do that. If I wanted to measure D, I would do that. So, if I then tell you to measure the voltage at B with respect to C, you would put your positive terminal here, uh, your positive probe here, rather, and your negative probe at C. If I told you, if I told you, I wanted you to measure the current at 
I'm sorry, the voltage at between A and C. You would put your positive lead on A and your negative on C. If I told you that I wanted the current, uh, the voltage between B and D, well, positive of B, negative on D, and so on and so on. In this case, VB, we obviously can measure it, but there is a way to go about this theoretically. What is voltage? Well, we don't know voltage. What do we know? We know both the resistances and we know the current. 2 amps. So if we add up our resistances, in this case R2 plus R3, that is... Did I do that right? Let's just change that over to a 2. R3 is equal to 2 ohms. Anyway, so nothing has changed. <laughs> if you were following along, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, R3 is equal to 2 ohms. Just to make the math simpler. Because apparently I will follow. Alright, so VB. What do we know? We know all of the current that passes through all of the points. And we know what the total resistance is. In this case, VB is going to equal R times I. What is R times I? Well, it's R2 plus R3. R2 plus R3 times I. Do note that this can also be written as R2 times I plus R3 plus I. What is R2 plus I? It's the voltage across R2. What is R3 plus I? Ah. Yeah. Why do I keep doing this? Plus R3. That's not an R. R3 times I. What is R2? R2 is the voltage across R2. I'm sorry, what is this term over here? What is this term? This term, R2 times I, is going to equal to the voltage that you measure across R2. What is this term over here, R3 times I? Well, that is going to be the, the voltage that you measure across R3. In this case, V at point B is going to equal to this voltage plus this voltage. So, in this case, it'll be 4 ohms times 2 amps. That is, going, that is going to equal to 8 volts. Now, if I were to ask you about... If I were to ask you about the voltage of R1, you have 2 amps times 1 ohm. That is equal to 2 volts. 2 volts plus 8 volts is equal to 10 volts. There you have it. So, VA in this case is also equal to V of R1 plus V of R2 plus V of R3. You see how this is starting to make sense? You have your current I times R1, 2 amps times 1, this is going to be 2. 2 amps times 2, this is going to be 4. 2 amps times 2, this is also going to be 4. So you have 2 plus 4 plus 4. That is equal to 10 volts. And I forgot my units there. That is what it means to be in series. All of the current that flows through one also flows through the other. And hopefully now to get to the lab. What do I need for lab 5? Let's start with constructing this circuit. We have R1 up here. Yeah, close enough. R1 
one we have r1 up here r2 and let's label this r3 we have measuring points a over here b over here c in this location and d down there I don't quite yet know what these resistances are or what the voltage is. Also, I forgot to do that. I always do that. Or rather, I like to see that. Using the circuit in figure 5.1, th that over there is figure 5.1, R1 is equal to 1K equals 1 kilo ohm. R2 is equal to 2.2 kilo ohm. R3 is equal to 3.3 kilo ohms. And E is equal to 10 volts. This is over here, 10 volts. Hopefully that one is readable. Anyway, we're looking at Table 5.1. Table 5.1 asks you to read the. Did we not do this already? Oh, wait, no, this is the lab that we're going to do today. Anyway, yes, I am filming this on Wednesday, the 19th of February. Uh, I theory. What is our theoretical current? Well, we have 10 volts and we have all of our resistances. In this case, our... I swear, how do I keep losing markers? I don't get it. Nope. Nope. And... Uh, nope. Brilliant. I don't have my ruler nearby, so this will have to do. So we have our I theory. I at point A. I at point B. And I point C. If we once more go back and uh, remember our theory, we know that our I theoretical is going to be equal to V R I. So, we know our voltage, we know our resistance says we don't know our equivalent resistance. What we need to find is our equivalent resistance. So, we know that our total, which is also the same as an equivalent resistance, I'm just using a different language here, is going to equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. How can we make sure that we are doing the right equation? Well, we look at the currents. Whatever current goes out of here, Whatever current goes out of the positive terminal has to go through R1, has to go through R2, has to go through R3. There is no other path that that current can take. Therefore, they add one after the other. In this case, our, our total is going to equal to uh, 1, 3.3. 3.3 plus 3.2 is what? 6.5? 6.5 kilo ohms. That is going to be our, our total. We are trying to find our current. So, current is equal to V over R. V over R total. V over R total is also equal to 10 volts over 6.5 kilo ohms. 
V over R total is equal to 6.5 kilo ohms. So 10 divided by 6.5. Okay. So that gives me 1.54. Did I do that right? 1 plus 2.2 plus 3.3. 6.5. All right. Excellent. So this over here adds up to, or simplifies over to 1,005. That is where it went wrong. This over here is 1.5. Four milliamps. We have a volt over an ohm, and that is kilo ohms. So we can do this and then add the milli over there. Same thing. That is 1.4 milliamps. So our I theory is going to be 1.54 milliamps. What is the current at point A? Well, look at the circuit. Is there any other way that the current can go? No. So. Five point one done. Now we are measuring voltage. We measure the voltages from the Oh yeah, that's deviation. As I said, I'm not gonna do deviations in this video. Alright, 31 minutes. We're looking at voltages now. Voltages. Theory. Measured. and percentages. Like always, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. You should know how to do that by now. We're measuring the voltage across R1, across R2, and across R3. From the previous demonstration, you should know that R total was equal to 6.5, is that right? Yeah, 6.5 kilo ohms. I total, or rather in this case just I, because we don't have, our currents don't separate anywhere, I was equal to 1.54 milliamps. That's us theory, by the way. Not theory. Let's start over here. What is our vo what are what are we trying to find out here? We're trying to find voltage. That leaves us with V is equal to R times I. We know what our current is. Do we know what our what our resistance is? Yes, we do. Our resistance of R1 is 1k, so 1.54. V of R1 is going to be equal to 1.54 milliamps times R1. In this case it's 1.54 milliamps times whatever R1 is. R R1 is 1k. 1k ohms. We have a milli times a k. Those two cancel out. 1 times 1.54 is... Why did I draw this so long? One times one point five four is one point five four ampere ohms, which is equal to one point five four volts. So this is going to be equal to one point five four volts. R two is the same thing. V R two is going to equal to I times R two. 
What is I times R2? Well, 1.54 milliamps times, what is R2? 2.2 kilo ohms. And I should draw that ohms better just so it isn't confusing. Ohms. So 1.54 times 2.2. 1.54 times 2.2 is equal to 3.39. 3.39 volts. Three point three nine volts. The same is true for R P R three. V R three is equal to I times R three. This is equal to one point five four times ten to the negative three amps times three point three times ten to the three ohms. If you notice, care if you if you're looking carefully, you will notice that ten to ten to the three times ten to the negative three, those are going to cancel out. So, one point five four times three point three is equal to five point oh eight volts. Five point 08 volts. Now if you add these up, 1.54 plus 3.39 plus 5.08 is equal to 10 volts. You notice how the voltage drop of all of the resistors equals the total voltage. That is also what it means to be in series. The voltage drops of all of the resistors equals to the voltage supplies to the series circuit. Now, how do we go about measuring this? Very simple. You put them one after the other. I should still have several of these out here. That's a 1K. That over there is a 2K. And this one over here is a 3.3K. And I'm not going to be using this one for now. So. Alright, hopefully the camera is able to see that one. Alright, so we have our 1K right there. Connected to the first row, connected to this. On that first row it is connected to our 2K. Red, red, black, brown. And over here we have it on row number 11 connected to a 3.3k and that goes back to our power supply now let's see if that is showing our power supply let me move that over list a little bit not too much maybe yeah, that should be we have our two leads of our power supply the first lead the red one is going to be your current source it's going to be your positive so I'm just going to plug that in there. Hopefully this is showing. That is plugged in there. And then we have the black lead that comes out of the negative terminal of our power supply. And that is recording good. I'm gonna plug that there. So where is gonna where's current gonna go? Current is gonna go. Whatever did I do with my pointer? I used to have one around here. Oh it's right here. Anyway. Current is gonna come out of the red lead on our power supply. It's going to go in here, into here, it's going to go through R1, into the breadboard, through R2, into the breadboard, through R3, and then back into the negative lead, and into the power supply unit. Simple enough. What we're trying to measure is voltage, so select voltages. We know what kind of voltages we are expecting. We're expecting 1.54 across R1. We're expecting 3.39 across R2. And we're expecting 1.54 across R1. I'm sorry, uh, we're expecting 5.08 across R3. So I'm going to turn this on and set it over to 10 volts. When I measure, I'm just going to use 
the simple probes. So, putting a positive terminal to the most positive part of the uh, circuit, I'm going to measure that voltage. And what do I get? 1 1.5 1 1.56 1.56 1.56 volts. Now I'm going to do the same with R2. R2 is the one that's over here. So, whatever voltage I get here, 3.39 That one was actually spot on. Excellent. And then five point one seven. Five point one seven volts. You see how they're somewhat close. Of course, this is that is actually reading to ten point one. And that covers table 5.2. Now table 5.3 is a bit more involved. It is the same thing but with an extra resistor. In this case we're going to have R4. So allow me to shut this off and then we're also going to 20 volts. Which is always fun. So let me erase the parts that we do not need. Now our current is going all the way through here and it has to go through an extra resistor there is an extra thing in its path this is now going to be R3 and this one over here is going to be R4 R3 is equal to uh, what does that thing say R3 is equal to 3.3k and where is that green one R3 is equal to 3.3 kilo ohms and R4 is equal to 6.8 kilo ohms 6.8 kilo ohms and then table the last one being that percentage deviation which I'm not going to do I'm not even going to draw it this time around of voltage voltage theory Let's see if I can spell theory correctly this time. And measured. We have the voltage for R1, R2, R3, V at point A, C, at point, between points A and C, and the voltage at V, B. Let me mark these down, because I did not do that. So for this one, we have A, B, C is over here, and D is over here. Also, this is no longer 10 volts, this is 20 volts. Yay! 20! It is now 20 volts. Where do we start? We know voltages, we know resistances. What do we not know? We do not know current. Starting with current. We need to find what is our total resistance. We know what our total voltage is. We know that our, our total is going to equal to R1 plus R2. Jesus Christ me. That is atrocious. R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 in this case. And if we had an R5 plus an R5, R6, or so, and we keep going down the Yamaha line. In this case, that is going to equal to 1 plus 2.2 plus 3.3 plus 6.8 times 10 to the 3 ohms, whatever that is. I'm going to write it down here. Our total is going to equal to, and 
hopefully not mess it up this time, 1 plus 2.2 plus 3.3 plus 6.8. That is 13.3 kilo ohms. 13.3 kilo ohms. Nice. And we have our voltage of 20 volts. And since we know what our current is going to be, so I is equal to V over our total. In this case, it is 20 volts divided by 13.3 kilo ohms, which gives us that comes out to 1.50 milliamps. That is our I. So allow me to erase this. Remember that I equals 1.5 milliamps, and I'm just going to put that elsewhere. In this case, I is equal to 1.50 milliamps. Now, what are we trying to find out? We're trying to find out the voltage across R1. How do we find the voltage across R1? Well, there you go. The voltage across R1 is equal to the resistance of R1 times the current through R1. What is the current through R1? It is I. All of these are in series. So, whatever this is, I'm only going to do a few of them. V of R1 is going to equal to R1 times I, which is equal to, let me do it in order, R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm times 1.50 milliamps, which is equal to milli times kilo cancel out, 1 times 150 is 150, so 1.50 ohm amps, which is equal to a volt. 1.50 volts. Let me do R3. V of R3 is equal to R3 times I, which is equal to, what is R3? It is equal to 3.3 uh, kilo ohms times 1.50 milliamps, which is equal to 1.5 times 3.3, 4.95 volts. So R3 is going to, ooh, I forgot to add R4. R3 is equal to 4.95 volts. Let me fix that real quick. VAC, and this one is going to be VB. If you recall to my ramblings earlier, you are going to know what VAC and VB stand for and how you go about measuring them. Let's do R4 for good measure. R4, V of R4. V of R4 is equal to R4 times the current through R4. What is the current through R4? It's I. So I is equal to 6.8 kilo ohms times uh, what is that? 1.50 milliamps, which is equal to 1.5 times 6.8, 10.2 volts. You notice how the higher resistances will drop the highest voltage? Because they are a larger factor in the equation. So, 10.2. R4 is 10.2 volts. And I'm going to leave that out there. That. Now, for VAC, we we're talking about the, the voltage of V and AC. We could simply add the voltage drops of R1 and R2. So, let's do this algebraically first. VAC, VAC is equal to V of R1 plus V of R2. 
2, which is also equal to VR1 is equal to R1 times I plus VR2 is equal to R2 times I. We have, a, we have an equation that we can simplify here, which is equal to R1 plus R2 times I. We can factor out I. So VAC is equal to R1 plus R2 times I. In this case, VAC is going to equal R1 is 1 kilo ohm. Let me write that properly. R1 is equal to, oh, be quiet, you, plus 2.2 kilo ohms times 1.50 milliamps. This is equal to 3.2 times 1.5. And let me simplify over here. And I'll show you what that is. 1.5 times 3.2. That is equal to 4.8. 4.8 volts. So, 4.8 volts. When we talk about the voltage at VB, we're talking at putting our positive lead here and our negative lead down here. Therefore, we are measuring the voltage of R2, R3, and R4 combined. You can do this process over here. Be quiet. You can do this process over here with R1 or that I did with R1 and R2. Just do it with R2, R3, and R4. Or you can simply take the entire voltage, 20 volts, minus the voltage of R1. In this case, V at B is going to equal to E minus V of R1. We know what E is, 20 volts. Do we know what R1 is? R1 is, I'm sorry, do we know what the voltage of R1 is? Well, it's over there. Or we can also compute it again. Is equal to E minus V of R1 is equal to R1 times I, which is equal to 20 volts minus 1, that's not a 1, 1 kilo ohm times 1.50 milliamps, which is equal to 20 minus 1 E3 times 1.5 e to the negative 3 18.5 18.5 volts does that surprise anybody no it doesn't 18.5 volts now how do we go about measuring these we construct the same thing we just add another resistor in series in uh, parallel in this case, I'm going to do this one over here. And I have a 6.8K somewhere over here. Yep, that's a 6.8K. All right, hopefully that shows a bit better than previously. Where is that loop? And you have our 1K right there. We have our 1K right there, connected to our 2.2K right there, connected over in line 11 to our 3.3K, connected to our 6.8 right there. It's a bit sideways, but there we go. Connected over to our 6.8K, and then our 6.8K, if we were doing this properly, would be connected to our power supply. So current out of our positive lead into the red lead, into the 1K, into the 2.2K, into the 3.3K, into the 6.8K, into the power supply. Again, out of the power supply, into the red lead, 
into R1, R2, R3, R4, and then back into the power supply. How do we go about measuring this? Well, it's relatively simple. We are using, what, 20 volts? 20 volts. So, let me bring this way up there. All right, that's 20 volts. Wake up. Now, hopefully that can show. So how do we measure? How do we go about measuring R1, the voltage across R1? Well, very simple. That's AC. Let's see that. I am fumbling around hard. Is that better? Is that more visible? All right, so voltage across R1, you put your probes across R1. 1.53. So what I'm doing here is doing that. Brilliant, and the marker that I needed. So, one point, what was that? Yeah, 1.53. 1.53 volts. When I do the same thing for R2, I get 3.3 .3 volts. When I do the same thing for R3, give me R3. 5.05. Five point oh five volts. When I do the same for R four, what do I get? Ten point six one. Is that correct? Ten point six three. Ten point six three volts. Now measuring V A C. Where is A and where where is C? A is where your red probe is going to go, C is where your negative probe is going to go, or your common probe is going to go. So VAC, over here. You're going to put it across R1 and R2. So from point A, point A would be over here, and point B would be somewhere over here. And for that I get 4.85. And the voltage at B. When we do this, positive goes positively goes there, and then the other one goes to ground. We are all, whenever you only have one point to uh, one uh, designator over here, you are measuring with respect to ground. So, where is point B? I am measuring over here. I am doing this. Oh, that's high. That is very high. Why is this climbing? We measure 18.66. And again, that is simply because I have a garbage power supply. So, it is what it is. So, when we measure R1, we measure across R1. When we measure R2, we measure across R2. When we measure R3, we measure across R3. When we measure R4, we measure across R4. When we measure VAC, we measure from V to C. When we measure from VB, we measure from B to ground. So, we are measuring the voltage of all of these R2, R3, and R4 in sum or added together. This one I'm just going to leave empty. I'm not going to do that one. It's very simple. I demonstrated already how to do it. Now for the questions and I have to get to editing this one so that it can go up tonight. For the questions, for the circuit of figure 5.1, what was the expected current measurement at point D? 
Well, uh, is that still recording? Excellent. So at point D, what is our expected current measurement at point D? What is our expected measurement through here? Remember that all the current that goes out of here, all the current that goes out of here has to go back in here. So at point D, it's going to be the same current that left our source. So whatever I was for the circuit. For circuit, for circuit figure 5.2, what are the expected current and voltage measurements and voltage measurements at point D? Alright. Now here's an interesting one. For current at point D, what do we expect? For current, we expect the same current that we saw for the entire circuit. Very simple. However, for voltage, that would be equal to VD. Anyway. VD. What happens when we are given a V and a point? We measure it with respect to ground. Ground. So we measure with our positive lead here. Oh wait, I have VD drawn out. So we measure it with our positive lead on D and then with the other lead on ground. What am I also doing here? I am measuring the voltage of R4. I am measuring across R4. If you, if you understand what I'm doing here. So what is the voltage at VD? It's going to be equal to the voltage across R4. It's going to be VR4 which is 10.2 volts or whatever it is that you measured across R4. In figure 5.2, R4 is approximately twice the size of R3. I'm sorry. In figure 5.2, R4 is approximately twice the size of R3 and about three times the size of R2. Would the voltages exhibit the same ratios? Do they? Well, R4. R4 is dropping 10.6. Is that about twice what R3 is dropping? Is that about four times? I'm sorry, is that about three times what R2 is dropping? You can figure that one out. And if you want to know why, it's because of the equation. V is equal to R times I. If R doubles, this is going to double. If R goes, up by, goes down by half, this is going to go down by half. It is a linear correlation. Or proportional, rather. Would that be linear? Yeah. What about the currents through the resistors? Well, what about them? What is I? I is equal to V divided by R. So, I is equal to V divided by R. What is going to happen as R goes up? I is going to go down by a lot. So, our currents are the inverses of what is going to happen to the voltages. We're going to have less current through the resistor as the resistance goes up. If a fifth resistor of 10k was added below R4 in figure 5.2, would this alter VAC and VB? Show your work. Well, Let's add a fifth resistor. I'm just going to add it over here. Because that is where I have space. This is R5. If you go back to this time, span, time stamp and you add an R5 of 10k, that is all the work that you need to do for this one. I'm just going to give you a clue. The total resistance is going to go up. The current I is going to go down. VAC is going to remain this. I'm sorry. VAC is going to go down. And V at B is going to go up. So, 
the current is going to go down the current the voltage from V to AC is going to go down because you have less current and the voltage at B is going to go up because you have more resistance and that should pretty much cover it